Hi everybody, it's Daniel with Fun Ukulele Projects and I'm here to share a really fun project with you and the project is the ukulele over here, not here. This is my Kolo KTM 00. That'll come, uh, come in later in the video. Anyway, this project is a completely custom, one-of-a-kind uh, modification, I guess you could call it. Now it's a, just a custom ukulele. It started its life as a Kala K-A-B-E-M. That means a baritone exotic mahogany. I got it for $15 because the neck had been snapped off. So it was a broken ukulele that I got in an auction. And so what I do is I put the headstock back on and then strung it up, you know, as the baritone that it was, uh, to see if my wife would be interested in playing baritone. And she wasn't, and so then I strung it up as a left-handed baritone, realized I really don't care for playing baritone myself. So then I put Guadalupe, you know, low octave GCEA strings on it and played it occasionally, but the strings were just a little too uh, loose. And so you really couldn't play it, you know, with much gusto because you would over overload the strings and their tension. So it just sat, and it sat for some time. Then uh, what happened was I, um, I'm actually working on a couple designs I'm going to be building, some custom instruments, and I've been toying with the idea of trying out an 18-inch scale uh, tenor ukulele. Actually, I was thinking about using it as a scale to build, and I didn't want to build one until I actually had played one. And so I was going to bed one night, and I just had this epiphany and it was like literally, I was, I was lying down, going to sleep, and all of a sudden, a just thought came to me, measure the baritone. So I went out here, I measured the scale length of this baritone, and lo and behold, it was uh, uh, 18 inches from the second fret to the saddle. So I basically had the foundations of my 18 inch scale tenor ukulele. And there's a reason I wanted to go with 18 inch scale. First off, there are some custom builders that use 18 inch scale for their, their custom instruments. I know there's some people some, that will make a 19 inch scale like super tenors, but those uh, oft times sound better if they're tuned you know, with B flat tuning as opposed to GCEA tuning. And I wanted to go with the 18 inch scale. I wanted to test it. And one of those big advantages is that you can still use most uh, tenor ukulele string sets. They'll have a little more tension, provide a little more clarity to the notes. And so what I ended up doing was um, cutting two inches out of the neck. I removed the, the second fret and I used that as a guide for cutting at the, at the neck. And then up at the saddle, I removed the, not the saddle, the nut, I removed the nut and I used the slot up there as a guide for cutting cleanly through the neck. And, and I think I have a photo um, of the little neck section uh, that I can, I can show. And then I put it together. But now in doing that, once I put the neck on, obviously now it's shrinking the neck two inches that necessitated reprofiling the neck so that it had a nice shape to it, a nice thickness to it for playing. Uh, and in reprofiling the neck, I found out something um, I personally will say rather disconcerting. Uh, but, uh, and I'll explain that in a second. It was so much so that I actually contacted the company, the company being Kala. You see, when, if you were to look at this instrument up close, you would notice that there's a little piece of wood that I had to add up by that walnut section because I shaped a little too aggressively when I first started. And the reason I did that was because this isn't a walnut fretboard. So I was sanding with the pressure that a walnut fretboard would have needed you know, when I was sanding and shaping, only to find out that this is just very, very cheap plywood with walnut veneer. Uh, it wasn't listed as a plywood fretboard. It was listed as a walnut fretboard. And so what I ended up doing was contacting Kala. And I basically said, I'm working on an instrument. I didn't say exactly what it was. I just said, I have a baritone. I'm doing a customization project that requires reprofiling the neck. And in reprofiling the neck, I've noticed that uh, the fretboard is actually just cheap plywood with walnut veneer. And, 
it, the description says the walnut fretboard, and I said right in the uh, email that, you know, I, I, th I think that's not, to me, it doesn't seem super honest. I was just curious what Walnut Wall Kala's take on it is. And so the response I got from Kala was uh, that uh, Kala uses plywood for its inexpensive, it's more budget-oriented ukuleles. And they continue to use plywood to number one, save costs, and number two, because almost no one ever complains about the performance of their fretboards. Uh, they also said the, in the letter, the person writing the, the email said that, you know, Colin specifies real clearly when they're using laminate and not using laminate, et cetera, et cetera. So I decided to go to Colin's website and take a look for myself. Well, when I took a look, I found that the exotic you know, series, the exotic mahogany series, which in the past when I looked, I could have sworn it said it was laminate mahogany. Now it doesn't say laminate mahogany. It just says, you know, exotic is just top, back and sides mahogany. Same with the Pacific walnut, which used to be la say laminate. Now it just says top, back and sides Pacific walnut. And nowhere on either of those descriptions does it say plywood fretboard. It just says, you know, either rosewood fretboard or, or walnut fretboard based on what is the top wood, the top veneer over the plywood. And I'll have a photo, uh, a very clear photo showing the plywood that I'll post in this video. So then as I look around what Kala's website, I notice that Kala, you know, they do very specifically have a section called solid instruments. And in the solid instruments, I believe there are six instruments. They have another section called solid top instruments. And in that section, I believe they have four instruments. So I'm under the impression that Kala, and it's, and it's not just Kala, I'm, I gotta say this now because I've checked with some other, uh, you know, American brands of Chinese made instruments and noticed that they've been increasingly removing the word laminate from their descriptions and they've been adding the word solid to their solid instruments. And so it seems like more and more American companies are adopting this policy of, uh, saying all solid if it's a solid, all solid instrument or solid top, and then just not saying if it's a laminated instrument. Just, you know, if they say the wood, then the way things are now, I would say, you know, you know, if it says, if it's not saying specifically solid or solid top, even with the American companies these days, you had just better assume it's, it's a laminated instrument. Now back to the project, uh, once, excuse me, Back to the project, once I strung it up, it uh, sounded okay, but not great because of the fact that it had this really, th that boomy C that it's not a boomy, it's like more like a wah, wah sound to the C, which I don't like at all. So I needed to fix uh, the, in not the intonation, but the, the acoustic properties of the instrument to get the most out of it that I could because the other issue with it is it just sounded like a GCEA baritone, and I wanted this to sound like a nice uh, GCEA tenor. And so the first, the first uh, aspect of the modification that I included into the project was to open up the case a little bit, and I did that by adding a side sound port, which is right here. And by opening the case up, what I did was uh, I actually tuned the side sound port to the instrument uh, because the, the, diff the different size of the hole is going to alter the acoustic property of the instrument. So I started with a certain size, and then as I was checking, I would make it larger. I actually drew out, uh, freehand drew an oval that I wanted, and then as when I got to about 80% of that size, I, would, I, I left the strings on. I would tune it up and test everything. Did the C sound right? No, it didn't. So then I go larger. When I got to the size I wanted, I, I decided I needed to go a little bit bigger. So I did. And that really helped the C. It got rid of that, that wah sound to it that, that I didn't like. I got a much clearer C note. It's one other thing that I need to mention before I move on, because before I even got to that, the nut was already one and a half inches. I did not like the narrow string spacing that Kala had up here. So I turned this into a through bridge with roughly 44 millimeter G to A 
So now it's much more consistent with the instruments that I, I enjoy playing. <clears throat> Back to the acoustics of the body now. The other issue with the kala is that it, the high notes were just weak. There's a, there, there's a song that I'm working on. Actually, just pluck it. It's the first note in, I think, Lara's Waltz. And when I would do that, I uh, just pluck that, that chord, the, um, it just, you, you would hear the notes ring, but there, were, there was no sustain whatsoever, and the notes didn't have any kind of a musical tone to them. And the reason for that was just because of the, uh, the acoustic properties that were built into this instrument, partly because of the X-Brace Kahlo uses and partly because of the cheap laminate that Kahlo was using. And so I needed to change that. Now let me explain real quickly. Kahlo does use an X-Brace in its bracing systems. A lot of people don't realize X-Braces were designed for steel string guitars. And what the X-Brace does is it really enhances the monopole mode of vibration. That is the where the lower bout basically moves up and down. And the reason for that is to enhance bass response because steel strings guitars have, you know, the, the highs in spades with the little steel strings. <clears throat> the issue, though, is that ukuleles don't use steel strings. And... Uh, whole X brace was, as I said, designed for a steel string instrument to be max to really get its greatest benefit. So you put an X brace onto a nylon string instrument, and then you have a you know a fairly cheap laminate that is used to build the body, and that's where a lot of the extra the boom was coming from. In this case, it was also killing the high notes, so I had to change that. Uh, now to um, not get too geeky here, but to explain what I did and why, understand that there are many different modes of vibration that go on on an instrument top. I'll just mention, you know, three modes real quickly. And uh, they would be the monopole mode, where this whole lower bout will move up and down. Then you have the cross dipole mode. Uh, well, the monopole mode really affects the, the mid and the bass sound of the instrument. And then the cross dipole mode, the sides, you get them vibrating like this. And that's what really brings out the highs. And then you can have the long dipole mode where you can actually, there's vibration going like this. Now, these don't happen exclusive to one another. All of these are happening all of the time. And all of these are happening whether you have a solid instrument or whether you have a laminated instrument. So if you ever see a video where someone says, oh, solid instruments are better because the vibrations go up and down the instrument. And laminated instruments aren't as good because the vibrations don't know which way to go. I've actually heard people say that. They really don't, that person doesn't know what they're talking about, actually. The, it's the bracing will affect how the vibration is uh, interacting with the instrument and the acoustic properties of those vibrations, regardless of whether it's solid or laminate. Uh, and I really wish I would have done, um, what was I going to say? I really wish I would have done a playing video before I started changing everything because of how dramatic everything it, it is, the difference is. But suffice it to say that the first thing I had to do was minimize the monopole mode of vibration. And the way you do that is I needed to stiffen up the center line of the instrument. So I know that Kala has a sort of a trapezoidal bridge plate to fit in between, you know, the lower part of the X at the bottom. And what I did then was I, I used a piece of wood and I tried different thicknesses of spruce and, until I got the thickness that, that worked the best. And I put it, I glued it right into the top, right at the X of, of the X brace. And what that did was it stiffened up the you know, the, the, the vertical, if you're looking at the instrument this way, you know, the lengthwise uh, center line aspect of that X, and it toned down what was last of the 
um, the excessive, you know, it was almost all gone, but toned down the last of that, that blah sound from the C. That didn't help the high notes though. You see, what I did was I tamed the monopole, but I have not done anything yet to fix the dipole mode of vibration. So what I had to do was, Kala uses a very thick center brace. I'm oh, not center brace, a very thick sound hole brace on both sides of the sound hole. Much thicker than it needs to be uh, for a baritone, or especially for what is now a tenor. So I literally had to um, loosen the strings and take a, an exacto knife with a razor blade and start hand carving taper into what was a straight bar. I hand carved taper into it to activate the vibration on the sides of the instrument. I did this for, and I'll, tell, I'll, I'll show pictures of this. I did this for this side of the instrument and I did it for this side up here of the sound hole. So now this has tapered sound hold brace here and a tapered sound hold brace here. And as I did that, it literally transformed this instrument. Uh, I do need to say quickly, because I don't want people to just start going in there shaping their instruments. It was a slow process. I would take a little off, I'd retune the instrument, I'd play it. Take a little more off, retune the instrument, and play it. And until I got it sounding the way I wanted to. I've literally doubled the sustain of this instrument. I have given a musical quality to the high notes. It now, if, if I'm playing this in a group and people don't know it's a laminate, just based on sound, they wouldn't think it's a laminate instrument. It has overtones that you would normally expect from a, a, a nice solid wood instrument. Uh, it took a lot of work, but uh, it's really fun to play. I really enjoy the uh, 18 inch scale. You know, people say butt's a disclaimer. So yeah, it took a lot of work, but boy, it was worth every minute for what, what I got out of it. See, I didn't, want it, I didn't want it just as a proof of concept instrument to see if I liked the 18 inch scale. I wanted to create something that, that sounded like a tenor, like a rather bright and full sounding tenor. And uh, that's basically what this is now. So the reason my Cola KTM 00 is out is because it's a wonderful sounding instrument. It's a rather warm sounding instrument, even though I have it strung, you know, uh, re-entrant. Both instruments have the same uh, Fremont Blackline strings on them. And I'll just play a few notes. I'll do a little playing section, but just to hear the notes themselves. That's really wonderful. Uh, it's, it's, it's warm and full, yet it's bright and it's chimey with the higher notes. Uh, and the reason I have the colo out is I tried this with all of my different ukuleles and it really has a more similar tone to my, to my K10 00 than other instruments. Now I'm just gonna just play the very beginning of the beginning notes of Canon in D just to hear the difference with these two. And then I'll have a playing section where I'll play a few different songs and then I'll, I'll wrap up the video. Okay, now I'll have, put a playing section in here. I'll play a couple different songs on each so you can hear uh, how they sound. I like to use Sonoe because it moves up the fretboard and I can play it, I play it slower than I would normally play it, but I play it nice and slow so you can hear the way the notes interact with one another, the overtones of the instrument, etc.
This is a really fun piece from Ukulele Way by James Hill. It's arranged by James Hill. It's called uh, Long Ago. enjoy this instrument I love the full sound that it has it's actually as you've heard it's actually a brighter instrument sounding instrument than my Koolo at KTM 00 uh, that's neither good nor bad it, the Koolo I love its sound I love that the warm sound of the Koa yet I wanted to make this a really bright sounding instrument because I wanted this to be something where when I show up and I'm playing it before I play it someone may take a quick glance and think oh he brought a baritone and then I start playing it and they're like, what? Because it's a tenor. It's an 18 inch scale, really bright, full sounding tenor. And I really enjoyed this project because this project also demonstrates that even with, you know, not the highest of quality of laminate, uh, if someone really takes the time to work with the acoustic properties of the instrument, you can make a laminate instrument sound beautiful. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'll see you in the next video.